Natural language processing, its overview in healthcare, and what are its applications is significantly important to understand how we're going to move forward with digitizing healthcare in general and putting artificial intelligence in particular. Natural language processing is a way, is a subfield of artificial intelligence, linguistics, computer science, in which it teaches computers how to read, write, listen, and speak. It is an amazing breakthrough that has been going on for the past 10 years and has significantly accelerated in the, next, in the, in the last few years. We're going to he discuss here multiple applications of NLP. This is part of the larger series that I'm doing about digital voice assistant in telehealth. The first of the lecture was true impact of virtual care, how it is a paradigm shift, and how digitization of the front door of medicine will change the way we digitize the whole healthcare system. Natural language processing is the second one which we're going to discuss now. Artificial intelligence has multiple subfields. Natural language processing is one of the fields in artificial intelligence. Its applications in healthcare are three. Number one, intelligent EMR. You're able to, you, electronic medical records are a bane of physician's existence. We need to make them smarter. And the only way to make them smarter is through this technology, natural language processing. Intelligent chatbots will be extremely important to provide wellness as well as to provide answers to physicians more quickly. Rather than doing 15 clicks to find out what the last glucose level was, I can just say, hey, X, and then it's going to answer me what exactly was the last patient's blood glucose. And then more, and of course, voice assistant that we are all aware of, example, Alexa, Siri, et cetera, et cetera. These voice assistants will be extremely important in helping patients manage their health much better. There's one more area called sentiment analysis that I'm going to leave, and there's going to be a whole lecture around it. So FYI, there's one more area, but I'm not going to discuss this in this lecture. Natural language processing went through an evolution uh, before the deep learning era. That deep, before the deep learning era, most of the natural language processing was mainly developed on statistical models. How many times the word reoccurs, how many words are important, and then what was before and after. These were statistical methods that were good, but at the end of the day were not great. They were, those were initial attempts towards creating a translation services rather than a true intelligence system. The second evolution that came in was after the deep learning era. In the deep learning era, the neural net mo network models were used. And these NLP network nets, sequence to sequence learning attention, led to the pre trained models. These pre trained models, when you are already pre trained them, you can actually transfer that learning to different kinds of applications, including healthcare. So, the difference between machine learning and deep learning is significant. I'm not going to go into the detail, but it, just for a quick refresher in machine learning, you need feature extraction done by humans. And that feature extraction done by humans is the key limiting factor because you cannot, there's enough that the feature extraction humans can do, especially when the language is so complicated and convoluted. What deep learning did was that the feature extraction and classification was done by the computer itself. The problem with deep learning is it requires massive amounts of data. And by massive, I mean massive, massive amounts of data. For NLP, I'm going to go into it. The different models are actually using the whole internet. As their, as their data model. The key difference came with this attention. When we're talking about here in 2015, attention, that was the key breakthrough because what attention was able to do was able to provide context. This is a great article from Towards Data Science. Please make sure you read it. Let me give you with an example. I poured water from bottle into cup until it was full. I poured water from bottle into the cup until it was empty. The word it, what is it here? Is it the cup or is it the bottle? Just changing the difference of the context makes a huge difference. What self-attention was able to identify for the machine was the context itself. And when the context was able to be identified, then it produces a significant amount of breakthrough as far as uh, processing of natural language is concerned. This and many other breakthroughs went into the formation of GPT-3, which is an open AI project. 
the GPT-3 was able to really significantly improve natural language processing. It can answer questions, write essays, summarize long text. And therefore, this is the key innovation in which intelligent EHR can be born. Because what we need is real time current EHR summarization. And with this technology, it is now possible. What it did was that it took really 175 billion parameters, not a small feat, and put them into the natural language processing model and pre-trained their models on it. What the breakthrough was that, that it was able to have if increasingly efficient because it was trained on such a high level. And then of course, it was able to have in-context information, which is key for EHR because we don't wanna have information that is not contextual to that to our patients. And as we know, context is for kings. Again, this was 2017, I believe, and then Google had to uh, topple it. And then they came out with their own model with a trillion parameters. So we went from 175 billion to 1 trillion. So clearly there's a race towards natural language processing between Google and Microsoft, OpenAI, et cetera. And we're seeing that, that this transformer methods in which there's attention and context is built in is bringing more and more efficiency as well. Again, which paves the pathway to have these to be real time. Real time analysis is a holy grail. It's not easy. And when you have, you need to build in efficiencies into the system to have some real time analysis. And these models not only have the breadth and the depth to analyze it, but also the efficiency to produce it in real time. China, of course, is also developing their own model from the Beijing Academy of Artificial Intelligence. And they also have 2.6 billion parameters working within that system. More the merrier, to be honest with you. NLP applications, as I said, now falls into three different buckets. Let's talk one at a time. Intelligent EMR. This is one study in which they reviewed critical care charts and wanted to know their outcomes. The NLP-derived terms yielded excellent predictive performance. Link is in the description so you can read that. There are now real-world examples in which NLP is applied on EHR to get real-world results for the patients. So this is extremely important. Intelligent chatbots have been there for a long time. This is nothing new. Chatbots are mainly fueled by artificial intelligence and become a viable option for human and machine interaction. And this is extremely important. I mean, I don't turn on op open lights or anything. My virtual assistant, my, my chatbots, including you know Siri, Alexa, Google, etc., can do it for me. However, these chatbots have an extremely important role in managing our health. And if they're intelligent, if they have the proper data to and contextual data about the patient itself, they can remind for medication, they can make appointments, they can start a telehealth visit. So this is an extremely important breakthrough that we need in the healthcare. And talking about these, the question really is that, unfortunately with the interoperability issues and data silos, we don't really have truly open source models. This is one example when the BERT model was was made open source and publicly available on clinical terms. These voice assistants are gonna be, are de rapidly being deployed in the hospitals. There are now Alexa at the bedside and they can say, can you please bring me water? They don't have to click the nurse button and then the nurse comes in and then the nurse has to ask what you need. That was the water and the water can be brought in by the, you know, the secretary or someone else, but to bring a nurse into it was actually kind of stupid. But now with these kind of technologies, you can improve the efficiency of overall of the whole network and then be able to produce better care for the patients in the, in, in this, in the same way. These can monitor for real-time signs as well of obstructive sleep apnea potentially because you can actually listen for gaps in the breathing while you're actually sleeping next to it. So there are multitude of possibilities that digital voice assistant can bring in. And this is gonna be a fantastic application for healthcare in the future. As I said, their EHR summarization can be done and then also it can aid image diagnosis as well. And this is also being this query focused image diagnosis is extremely important. Let me give you an example. So let's say if I am actually, the patient comes in with an acute stroke 
I just have to say, hey, X, give me a cute stroke summary. They can pop up a screen or even say it to me that, you know, what was the patient was previously on aspirin. The patient is not on warfarin or liquids. What is the last known? Well, that is something that the nurse or the triage person already puts it in the system the minute they come in. CT brain, what is the status of it? Is the patient already in the scanner or is it done? What was the last glucose level? That is done by the EMS generally. It is not even in the hospital electronic medical record. That sucks. And what is the last uh, blood pressure? Again, done by the EMS completely in a different system, when they're connected, when there are no data, data silos, then we can truly empower physicians to take care of patients faster and better. This will lead to increased and better outcomes. I did a whole paper on how the role of artificial intelligence in telestroke. It's a fantastic read. It's a review paper. It's a mini review. And you should definitely go ahead and review this. And there's a, there's a, what I go into that is basically how the role of stroke imaging, what is continuous advanced outcome prediction, what is intelligent EMR, how documentation imaging workflow enhancement can be done, and contextually aware information, that is the key thing here, can be, can be made possible to improve telestroke care with artificial intelligence, which becomes from the natural language processing. I did actually create a, a, a clinical case around it and also made an animation explainer for this particular way of produce, providing telestroke care with enhanced with artificial intelligence. So please make sure to watch that. I'm grateful for your time. If you save a life, it is as if you save the life of all mankind.